everybody. Welcome back, boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shank, coming to you live from Summit Academy and working on that unit number eight, lesson number 10. Still talking about that Pythagorean theorem where we say it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we're also talking about square roots of non-perfect squares. So we're going to get those irrational numbers because they don't end or don't repeat. So what I want to do now is it says close closest estimate which is the closest or which estimate is the closest to the actual value of the expression so we're going to say if this is square root of 24 that's going to be about let me write it in here i'm going to say about again it's not going to be exactly equal to but i can say it's about 4.89 which is closer to 5. And again if you want to you can say 5 squared is 25 which, if I look at 24, 24 is close to 25. For the next one, square root of 7, that's going to be approximately 2.64. So the closest estimate is 2.5. And then for square root of 42, that's going to be approximately 6.48, which is pretty close to 6.5. And lastly, two parts of this one. We're going to say this uh, square root of 10 is about 3.16, and the square root of 97 is close to 9.84. And it's saying when you add those together, what's the close amount? Well, add those two together to get about 13, which is one of those choices. So again, each of those are going to be estimates because, again, this symbol means 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 is approximately approximately all right so again make sure you can use desmos when you're trying to calculate those values moving on read through the question when it has a passage like this. So it says, my and Tyler were standing at one corner of a large rectangular field, which is in the picture, and decided to race to the opposite corner. Since my had a bike and Tyler did not, they thought that it would be fairer to race if uh, my rode along the sidewalk that surrounds the field while Tyler ran the shorter distance directly across the field. The field is 100 meters long and 80 meters wide. If Tyler can run uh, at around five meters per second and Mike can run, or sorry, Mike can ride her bike at around uh, 7.5 meters per second. So we can say, uh, it says before any calculations, who do you think will win by how much and explain your reasoning. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's say like this. I'm going to say uh, even, even though my has a longer distance, uh, my will, my will win since my is moving faster. Again, you can just kind of uh, come up with your own prediction or own explanation. But what I can do is I can solve for this length here. So this length, this dashed line length here, notice how it kind of makes that right triangle where my hypotenuse, my hypotenuse is the length that I'm solving for. And so what I can do is I can say, well, that's going to be, let's set it up like this. Uh, let's do, actually move, uh, just kidding. Let's uh, write it in here. So I'm gonna say I have 100 squared plus 80 squared is going to be equal to c squared. So I could say if I have 100 squared, that's 10,000, yeah, plus 
80 squared is 6,400, so 6,400. Still know why my fours make that weird thing. And this is equal to C squared. Add those two together. This is 16,400. Take a square root of both sides. So I'd say the square root of square root of one six four zero zero is going to be about. I could say it's going to be about approximately one two eight point zero six. Make sure that's a decimal. Okay. So that's the, going to be the distance. So let's uh, try to find what each of these people ran. So I'm going to say, uh, let's do, let's do like this. I'm going to say for my, what was the pace that they ran? Uh, well, if I take 100 plus 80, which is the distance around the outside, because they're uh, they're riding their bike around the outside, and I'm they're running at a pace of 7.5 per second. That's going to be about 24 seconds. It's going to take them 24 seconds to get around that outside amount. And then for the diagonal distance, which is what Tyler ran, I can say, well, that's going to be uh, to Tyler. Tyler, and I would say 128.06 divided by their speed, which was five, that's gonna be about 25.6 seconds. And so if I compare how long it took, I'd say, hey, my was faster, and so they are the winner. So I'd say uh, my for that one. On the next part, we're now trying to uh, find the these diagonal lengths. So a couple parts of this, make sure you can break it apart. So I'm going to say, uh, here are two regular uh, rectangular prisms, I should say. Which figure do you think has a longer diagonal? And note that the figures are not drawn to scale. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make a claim. Again, you can kind of try this out on your own. Uh, but I think, I think... L has the longer diagonal because its volume its volume is greater greater than K's volume. So that's just like a way to kind of think about it. Again, you can kind of debate with your partner or with your own self, but we can prove and calculate the lengths of both diagonals. So uh, let's do it like this. Let me make this a little bit smaller, like this, and I'm gonna say, I guess it doesn't really, yeah, I'll do, I'll do a little bit smaller. So uh, let's do it like this. I'm gonna say, uh, let's do in green, I'm gonna say I'm finding this diagonal first. So I need to find this diagonal on the bottom part first, because I already know, I already know that this height is six because the other height is six as well. That means this, this height is five, but I need to find out what this green amount is. So I'm gonna draw it out. So I have a right triangle. I know my side lengths are four and five. Five, draw that a little bit better. And let's label this as X. So I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to use my Pyth uh, Pythagorean theorem. I have my two side length squared, so I have 4 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. Make sure you can simplify. So I have 16 plus 25 equals x squared. So this is 41 equals x squared. And so I'm going to say x. I'm going to say x is equal to, actually, I can write it there x is equal to the square root of 41 because we take the 
square root of both sides. And this is helpful because now I can solve for that length of k. So let me do, yeah, I'll do, I'll do blue since it's currently blue. I'm going to say that, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll draw it in. I'll say that this length is going to be the length k. And so I'm going to set up my, set up my right triangle. I'm solving for this length k. My side lengths are 6, and my bottom part, which is what we solved for x, is going to be square root of 41. I'll write it carefully, square root 41. Same setup, use your Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say I have 6 squared plus square root of 41. 41 squared is equal to k squared. So now we're solving for k. So this can be 36. This is going to be 41. My 4s, for whatever reason, keep doing that. And it equals k squared. Add those two together. That is 77 equals k squared. And so that means uh, take the square root of both sides. k is going to be equal to the square root of 77. Okay, so there's one length. Now let's find, uh, let's do, let's do purple for this one. I'm going to find this length right here. Let's label it Y. And I do, I'll do that right over here. So I'm going to say, I have... Right triangle. I'm looking for y. My side lengths are 5 and 5. Make sure that's 5. There we go. I'm going to do 5 squared, which is 25. Let me not skip a step, sorry. Let's not skip a step. So I have 5 squared plus 5 squared equals uh, y squared. So this is going to be 25 plus 25 equals y squared, so 50 equals y squared, and we're going to say y equals the square root of 50. So now we can use that for this diagonal length. Let's do red, or maybe an orange. Let's try orange, a little bit different. So we're going to say this orange length is going to be L. Let's call this L. So same setup, I'm going to use a right triangle, perfectly drawn as always. We're going to say this is L, and our bottom length is what we find, which is what we found, which is the square root of 50, 5, 0, and our height is 5. So plug that into your Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to have 5 squared plus the square root of 50 squared equals L squared. So we're solving for L. So this is going to be 25. This is going to be 50. And this is L squared. So we say this is 75 equals L squared, which means L is the square root of 75. So now when I compare these two, I can say, well, hey, very obviously the square root of 77 is larger than square root of 75. So I'm going to say for number two here, for number two, I'm going to say the diagonal, the diagonal length of k is longer than L, since we have the square root of 77 is greater than the square root of 75. So a couple steps with that one, but we were able to solve for that length by using that Pythagorean theorem 
two times. So you I couldn't have just said, you know, four and six and draw it like that. I had to you know, find that diagonal length so that way I knew it was right. Now on the back, it reads like this. Again, working on that practice problem. It says a, a man is trying to zombie, uh, zombie proof his house. He wants to cut a length of wood that will brace a door against a wall. The wall is four feet away from the door, and he wants to brace it two feet up from the, uh, up to the door. But how long should he cut the brace? So we're talking about, we're saying that this is our right triangle, so that means that this brace is that hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So we're solving for, let's just label it uh, x again. And so, use our Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Substitute in your values for your variables. I have 2 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. Be able to simplify. So this is 4 plus 16 equals x squared. Combine like terms. This is 20 equals x squared. And we're going to say x equals the square root of 20 which is going to be about uh, 4.47, and we're going to say feet. So again, make sure you can use that Pythagorean theorem, so that way you can solve for those missing side lengths. For number two, it says at a restaurant, a trash can's opening is rectangular and measures 7 by 9 inches. The restaurant serves food on trays that measure 12 by 16. Jada says that it is important, uh, impossible, I should say, for the tray to accidentally fall into the trash can, but uh, trash can because the shortest side of the tray is longer than uh, either edge of the opening. Do you agree or disagree with Jada's explanation? So, what I want you to do is find, find diagonal of the 7 by 9 rectangle. So what you can do, draw your picture, draw your picture. So we're going to say we have a right triangle, let's say 9 by 7, and we're solving for x. So I'm going to say if I have uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I have 7 squared plus 9 squared equals x squared. Be able to simplify. So I have this is 49 plus 49 plus 81 equals x squared, which this is 130. Take a square root of both sides. And so this is going to be x equals Let's say x is approximately, or sorry, x equals square root of 130, which is equal to or approximately 11.4. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say I'm going to say I disagree with Jada, but not for the same reason. I'm going to say because because of her, of Jada's, of Jada's, oh, let me, there we go, of Jada's reasoning. I'm going to say the shortest side of the tray is longer than the diagonal of the opening. So even though it's similar reasoning, we're saying that we're talking about the diagonal. You know, if you're thinking of you know how an opening looks or a rectangle looks you're talking about a rectangle but we're talking about you know if we split it diagonally what is that length and it's still the same idea so it's still shorter than 12 
inches, which is that shorter side of the tray. For number three, it says select all sets that are three side lengths of the right triangle. So what you're going to have to do is prove to see if it's a right triangle. Again, find longest side, which is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So we're going to say that's our hypotenuse. So we're going to say, is this true? So let me, let me draw it like this. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say this is going to be, and what I like to do too when I'm writing, when I'm trying to prove if it's a right triangle or not, I like to write my values in order from least to greatest. So I'm going to say, like if I have 7 squared plus 8 squared, I'm saying, is this equal to, so we have to have a question mark on it, is this equal to 15 squared? So when I simplify this out, we're saying uh, 49 plus uh, 64 is that equal to 225, which we definitely know it is not. So we're going to say no for that one. That is not a right triangle. In the next one, let me do a different color. Uh, orange. Let's find our longest side, which is 10. And we're going to say, again, use that calculator, calculate square root of 84 to find if it's the longest side or not. So we're going to say 4 squared plus 84 square root squared. Is that equal to, so I have that question mark, is that equal to 10 squared? So we're going to say, well, we have 16 plus 84. Is that equal to 100? We would say, yes, it is. So that one is good. Moving to the next one. Uh, if we have, let's find, we have this gives us, we're going to say 129, square root of 129 is longer than 11. So that's going to be our hypotenuse. So we have square root of 8 squared plus 11 squared. Is that equal to uh, the square root of 129 squared? So that's going to be 8 plus 121, which is equal to 20, 129 which is good. So that one's good as well. And lastly, I'll do in purple. Set it up. Longest side is 2. Longest side is 2, so that's our hypotenuse. So we say square root of 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared equals, or is that equal to, uh, 2 squared. So we're saying 1 plus 3. Is that equal to 4? Which it is. And so we also include that last one as an answer. So make sure, again, this is the converse. Let me actually write this down. This is the converse of Pythagorean theorem. Because normally when we have the Pythagorean theorem, we're saying, hey, given a right triangle, find the missing side. Now we're saying, is this a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem? And lastly, a little bit different, but we're saying for number four, a line contains the point 3, 5. If that line has a negative slope, which of these points would be on that line? So make sure you've kind of seen how this works. We're going to say, uh, as, as x increases, what happens to our y value? So as x increases, if we have a negative slope, our y value decreases. If we go the other way, meaning as x decreases, our y value increases. And that makes sense because if you uh, increases, if you look at the graphs, we're saying, you know, for this one, we're going to the right and down. And for this one, as we go to left, we go up. And that will give us, you know, a slope that is negative. And so which of these works out? 
Well, we're going to say for that first one, as x decreases, our y value also decreases, so it can't be that one. As x increases, y increases, so it can't be that one. For the third one, as x increases, y decreases, so that one's good. And for the last one, y value stays the same, so it cannot be that one either. So notice what, again how these work. So uh, y decreased, decreased, we're saying y increased, and y stayed the same. So make sure you can use those ideas that we had. So when we have that negative slope, this is what we should have. Again, be sure to pause, rewind, replay as needed. Be sure to ask questions as they arise. And as always, super slam that subscribe button.